Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel a couple of times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the last few years, although I think it's been about 18 months actually since we last tried a beer from them. But the beers that we've tried have mainly been different kinds of IPAs, if memory serves me correctly, and we also tried one of their very first sour beers that they did as well. Now, the beer that we're going to have a look at today is one that I've heard very good things about. Uh, it's a kind of amped up version of one of the beers that we've tried from them on the channel before, which was also a very nice one, actually. So, uh, yeah, very curious to see what this one is going to have in store for us. So hopefully it's another good beer. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review. And as always, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So uh, yeah, for this review then, we are going to head up toward Halmstad, which is in the southern part of Halland County here in Sweden. And we're going to go a little bit to the north of the city, to Vapnu. So this beer comes to you from Vapnu Gords Brewery, or Vapnu Farm Brewery, I guess we could say in English. This particular beer is called the Alna X. It comes in at 10% ABV, hence the X, and this one is a triple IPA. So uh, yeah, this beer was released here in Sweden as part of the local Osmoskalik assortment through Systembolaget for April of 2022, and we tried the Alna, I think maybe about two and a bit years ago, or something like that. That might have been the first beer that I tried from this brewery actually come to think of it but uh, yeah definitely nice to return to them again after what feels like a good long time and hopefully as we said earlier this beer lives up to the standards that we know they're capable of so yeah let's crack on then and see how we go so as always with my reviews then i'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the video description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that i've done from vapley gorge brewery before and we will hopefully add some more to that list at some point in the near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefetch or whatever it is you happen to be interested in do check out the playlists of beers from different countries there is one there for all the swedish beers that i've reviewed for you that's being added to very very regularly of course and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Vapnu Gorts Brewery then. So Vapnu, as I've mentioned to you already, can be found just to the north of Halmstad in the southern part of Halland County, which is the one on top of Skåne, where I am in the south of Sweden. But it's an estate that dates back to the 14th century, although the brewery business was opened back in 2016. So the first mention of the estate goes back to the year 1379 and the Vatnu Vadstena Monastery. So at one stage, it was owned by Peter Riebing, who was the grandson of St. Brigitta, uh, but later it was then taken by the Crown in 1410 after the owner, Abraham Brodesen Bad, was sentenced to death before it was passed back to his widow a little bit later on in 1419. Uh, in the 16th century, it belonged to the Norwegian family Urup and then to the Beck family before it passed into the hands of Gustav Otto Stenbock in 1661, who was the first Swedish owner since the, mo the times of the monastery. So his son Magnus took over and ran the estate until his death in the year 1717. But later, in 1741, Georg Bogislaus Steyl, who was a field marshal and county governor of Kalmar, um, he bought part of the Vapnu estate and then founded the Costa Glassworks along with Smolin County Governor Anders Kosko. But together they bought the rest of the estate and it stayed in the ownership of the same family since, with the current CEO of the overall company being Leonard Benson. So on site there's a castle dating back from the 18th century and they have an ancient runestone which is one of the few that you'll find in Halland County or Halland's Lane as you would say in Swedish. But today uh, Vapnu owns the historical site and they employ around 85 people. On the site there's a dairy, a brewery, a farm shop, a hotel and a restaurant and the farm has about 2,500 hectares of land and 450 hectares of forest. The farm produces meat, 
milk and various crops and they have a biogas plant to run their operations with and they've won numerous environmental awards as well. Of course, if you know anything about Scandinavia, there is a big green focus here in many, uh, for many companies. But uh, as of May 2022, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 40 different kinds of beer according to Untapped and that number will no doubt increase at some point over the next little while. But um, yeah, that is all I can really tell you about Vapnu Gourds Brewery for the moment. Mainly a history of the estate, to be honest with you, rather than uh, the actual brewery, if you like. But I'm hoping that I can get up there maybe at one point this summer. I've got a friend who lives in Helsingborg, but is originally from uh, Halmstad. So he was saying that maybe we should go and take a little look at the uh, Vapnu Gourds Brewery and maybe I can film an out and about video for you up there. I think that would be very, very cool. I do need to get more of those done in Sweden, actually. But uh, yeah, this one, uh, I think... Uh, it would be a very, very nice place to do. I need to go out and explore a little bit more in different parts of Sweden, actually. But these guys are supposed to have a very nice restaurant. And in my experience, they do very nice beers as well. But um, yeah, as I say, that's all I can tell you about Vapnu Gourds Brewery for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, let's go on and actually have a taste of the beer itself then. I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork before we open up. I will say straight away that this is very similar to what we've seen from Vapnu Gourds Bravery in the past. But there you can see, yes, Alna X. Um, you can see the W there. For the for Vapnu, of course. Um, w isn't really a letter that's often that's used in Swedish these days, I have to say. I'm sure one of my Swedish friends told me that they actually don't use it. It was replaced by V when they kind of reformed the lag language at one point. So do let me know about that in the comments section below. That is something that uh, I will need to have a little look at that. But it tells you a little bit about the brewery on the back here. It has a little bit in Swedish. So, uh, yeah, it's like... Um, do you know what separates us from other breweries? It is that we get everything ourselves direct from the garden. Um, we have our own plants, which we, you know, makes our own our own corn, our own barley. Um, we've got our own water. It's basically saying, yeah, we've got our own water source. Um, and it dates from the Magnus Stenbox time. Um, we use the remains of the plants to feed the garden, to, to feed the farm's animals. Uh, we've got our own biogas plant, which we mentioned earlier, and it to give us renewable energy as well. Um, yeah, it's basically just talking about how kind of renewable and things everything is here. But yeah, they basically say, yes, um, we are very, uh, yeah, we're ba basically very proud of all the things that we do here on the farm. And it also tells you as well, um, this is all thanks to our efforts on the farm, but it says we have named this beer after the farm's cow family. So yeah, that'll be where the name Alna comes from. Yeah, so Alna is their herd of cows, if you like. So yeah, I do quite like that, as we say. But um, yeah, 330 milliliter bottle, this one. I think I paid, I want to say I paid 40 Swedish krona for this one. So that is about four euros, somewhere in the region of like three pounds 25 sterling. And I guess somewhere in the region of like five dollars American. But yeah, 330 milliliter bottle this one. And as we said earlier, it is a triple IPA. This one contains uh, oats and wheat. So it probably will be uh, a kind of New England one actually. But I can see there's a wee bit of sediment uh, on the bottom of this. So we might just invert it and let that kind of spread through. You can see it kind of floating around. But there we go. But yeah, let's get this guy out then and we'll get on with the tasting. The Alna X 10%. Triple IPA, I suspect a New England triple IPA from uh, Vapnu Gourds Brewery in Halland County. So let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. I do wonder if my fridge has been just a little bit cold for this beer. It could well have been the case. But there we go. Yeah, I think that's actually done the trick. It's not too much in the way of sediment. You can see little bits of sediment floating around in this one, but not too much. So, um, yeah, there we go. There's the beer out and into the glass. So before the head disappears completely in this one, it hasn't poured with all that much of a head, we have to say. But yeah, you can see it's poured with a little bit under a quarter finger of a frothy, I would have said kind of cream coloured head. That is faded away to be a very, very thin layer. And there's uh, a nice kind of foamy ring 
around the edge of the glass there. Um, but yeah, the colour of the beer itself, I'd describe this one as being a very kind of bright yellow colour. Absolutely. I always like comparing these beers to different kinds of fruit juices. So this is a little bit like a kind of mango juice, I would say. Um, there are one or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass there and a few little ones going up toward the surface. But you can see there are little chunks. I think that's probably the oat and a little bit of the wheat that's kind of um, clustered together in this one. You've got that kind of sediment going on in this one. But it's all natural, of course. I never bother that much about, um, you know, about... Uh, the, the, the dress if you like but uh, yeah I like how this I do like how it goes together a little bit of haze to this one for sure uh, so remember in IPAs like this the level of haze that you get in these beers depends on the oat content wheat content and to a degree the yeast as well but the colour of the beer uh, the colour of the beer is of course dependent on the kind of malt, the types of malt that you use, the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role and any barrel agent you do or any adjuncts that you put in will affect the colour of your beer as well. But overall, it's a very, very nice uh, looking beer, this one, I have to say, even with the little bits of sediment floating around in it. Uh, I'm drinking this one at the very start of May, actually when this was released in uh, April, I was a bit late getting a hold of my beers, it took a little bit longer to deliver, unfortunately this time. But uh, yeah, regardless, it looks pretty nice and pretty much as you would expect in terms of appearance from an IP, from a modern IPA, can we say. But yeah, let's take a closer look at the aroma of this one then and just see how we go. Let's do this. Hmm, it smells pretty nice actually, I have to say. It smells like, the first impression of the aroma is that it's quite a, it's quite a big oily but still quite juicy IPA. But yeah, I think that is, um, I think that is very, very nice. Yeah, aroma-wise, aroma-wise, I think this beer um, is up my street. It actually smells a little bit like a cross. In some ways, it actually smells a little bit like a cross between a West Coast and a New England. It's got some of the oily, fruity character and some of the kind of some of the oily character, some of the oily fruitiness, and a wee touch of the brown sugar that you expect at the West Coast. But I'm still getting the kind of smoothness of the oats. And things like that that you would expect from a, a kind of New England. So maybe this is going to be one of these beers that is more like an, what they would call an American IPA, which is kind of somewhere in the middle. But uh, yeah, let's have another little look at the aroma and break it down for you properly. Ah, that is nice. That is nice. So, multi backbone of this beer then. For me, you get a little teeny, teeny touch of bread crust out of this one. Not all that much, but I get quite a nice, fresh, uh, like white bread. I get a nice, fresh white bread um, out of this one. You do get a little bit of the smoothness of the wheat. I do get quite a bit of the oaty character in this one. And interestingly, the oats actually come across as quite smooth and quite thick in a lot of ways. So, um, yeah, the way that that um, aroma goes together, I think is um it's really really nice um so yeah a little bit of bread crust a kind of fluffy white bread as we say a thicker wheaty note to this one um you do get a little bit of bitiness from the wheat in the back of the nose but again it's not over it's not overpowering if that makes sense uh but yeah you get a nice little bit of oatiness out of this one and the oats are quite smooth and thick and it's interesting with this one because um, at 10% EBV, you know, you would expect a little bit of brown sugar to come out of the beer. And I certainly, I do certainly get a little bit of that. But, um, yeah, I do, yeah, I do certainly get a little bit. Uh, I do certainly get a little bit of that nice kind of brown sugary element out of it. But, um, yeah. On, I'm trying to think that the brown sugary side of this beer... Um, it's not really caramelly, it is more like that typical kind of Werther's original butter candy type thing. I'm definitely getting a little bit of that. We touch of McVitie's digestive biscuit in there as well. But um, yeah, that's nice. So on the, um, on the hoppy side of things, um, 
for the green component, I don't, I don't think we need to say anything else about the malt base in this one, but for the green component for me, this actually has quite a bright floral aromaticity to it. So yeah, there's a teeny little bit of earthiness in there, but again, not a lot. Quite a nice bright floral aromaticity, and also a good little bit of a zesty kind of grassy character to this one. So I really like, I do really like how that, um, I do really like how all that goes together for sure. Um, yeah, the green component for me, nice and bright and floral, but just with a little bit of a zesty kind of grassy character to it, absolutely. Uh, yeah, remember, um, IPAs, three different kinds of hopping. You've got your early edition hops, which give you uh, most of your bitterness. That's where you get pretty much all the bitterness out of these beers. You've got late edition hopping, which gives you a little bit of bitterness, but mainly flavour and aroma. And then dry hopping gives you pretty much all flavour and aroma. Um, in terms of this one, I suspect that this has got, you know, mainly late edition hopping and uh, dry hopping. Maybe maybe a little bit of early edition hopping. Remember, West Coast IPAs use all three. New England IPAs tend to use the latter two, uh, late and dry. But uh, yeah, this one I think might have a little bit of all three in it. And whether it's a triple IPA, you do want a little bit more bitterness in it, in fairness. But yeah, in terms of the hoppy side of things with the beer then, the fruity side of the beer, I should say. So the fruity side, as I've mentioned to you, I find to be quite oily. Um, it feels familiar though. Um, it's more tropical leaning than anything else as well. So for me, I'm getting quite a little bit of... Um, I am actually getting quite a little bit of... like There's a wee touch of passion fruit in there, but there's a nice, very juicy, very ripe mango. So I've got a feeling that this might be something like Idaho 7... Um, maybe a little bit of citra in this as well actually. Citra would make sense because the beer does have quite a bright grassiness to it. Um, so yeah, something like that. I'm definitely, there's a wee teeny bit of passion fruit, but a very bright juicy mango, little bits of apricot and stuff underneath. But I find this beer, I think it has got a wee bit of a kind of lemony limey character to it as well. It's definitely not orange. It is more kind of limey, so it could be, you know, Motueka would be an option. Equinot also would be an option to give you the limey notes, but Citra, of course, has that big kind of thing in it as well. Um, but yeah, it's quite a tropical leaning uh, beer for me, this one. So yeah, a little bit, little touch of passion fruit, big juicy mango for me, apricot, and then a bit of lime, a bit of an oily lime. But um, yeah, aroma-wise, this beer is certainly quite interesting. So as I always say, take a wee bit, take a wee bit of, um, take a wee bit of um, time just to enjoy that aroma before you get stuck into it. But this is quite a nice beer. I'm looking forward to this. Let's crack into this beer without further ado. So yeah, this one is the Alma X, a 10% triple IPA. I suspect it's gonna be an American triple IPA, as they would call it, uh, from Vapnagors Brewery, just outside of Halmstad in Halland here in Sweden. Let's get stuck in. Slange, Skull, cheers. Yeah, that is pretty nice. Yeah, first impression of the flavour, big, big, nice big oily IP. And as I said earlier, it is, it's not like a big kind of thick, kind of creamy New England IP, which I remember the original Alna being actually. Um, and I had, uh, the, was the Alna the first one I had? There was a, a, a New England IPA that I had from them at one point, and it was the very, very first beer I tried. It came as a recommendation from a follower of the channel, actually. But, um, yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was a really, really big, it was, a, it was a really, really nice one. But this one is definitely more oily and akin to some of the later ones that I had from them, actually. But um, yeah, for me, quite an oily, smooth IPA, this one. Big oily fruits, smooth malt base, but you've also got a little bit of a green hoppy character as well. So yeah, I really like how this beer goes about its business, absolutely. So um, yeah, where do we start with this one then? Middle third of the palate. Um, yeah, middle third of the palate. You've got a nice little bit of a 
you have a nice little bit of a kind of bread crusty base. The soft kind of, on, on top of that, the bread crust is a wee bit more present in the flavour than it was in the aroma. But yeah, a little bit of bread crusty base. A smooth kind of white bready uh, backbone. But this one you can feel that kind of fluffy white bready character in there. But on top of, um, on top of that, yeah, kind of on, yeah, on top of that, you get a little bit of a, how would we say, you do get a nice little bit of a, a, a kind of thicker wheat, you know, so yeah, bread, little touch of bread crust, the soft kind of fluffy white bread from the barley malt, the thicker wheat, and then on top of that, this beer really does start to lean more toward the oats. So it's interesting, it's like an oily oaty uh, IPA, this one, absolutely, but I think when I'm, I think about the flavour profile you get out of this one, it is really more reminiscent of the kind of American, the, the beers that we would call American IPAs, you know, these ones that are a kind of hybrid of the New England and uh, and West Coast ones, it's definitely more like one of those than it is a, a straight up New England for sure. So yeah, it's got the oiliness and then some of the sweetness of the West Coast one and the, um, and the fruitiness as well is a bit more West Coast, but yeah, other elements in there, some of the flavours on the malt base are definitely a little bit more um are definitely a little bit more kind of um New Englandy but yeah I like that so as we said a little bit of bread crust the barley malt white bread the thicker wheat then on top of that you get these nice big smooth oaty notes uh coming out of this one so yeah the way that this goes together I think is um the way that this goes together I think is pretty damn nice uh, yeah, on top of the OT layer then, and the OT layer in this is quite interesting, as I've told you before, when it comes to IPAs, quite often the OT part of the beer is a giveaway for how old the beer is, and this one, so you can see with the sediment and things, it has been sitting for, you know, a couple of weeks in the bottle, which, and it has held up pretty well, but at 10% you'd kind of expect it to do that in fairness, but yeah, the OTiness in this one is really smooth and not so much creamy, but yeah, it works, it has, the beer has held up pretty well. So yeah, in the middle of your palate, like you've got a big circle and you can feel that thicker oaty character there. And as you go out toward the edges of your palate, you can feel that it just dries up a little bit. But in the dead, dead center of that big circle that I'm talking about, you can feel there's a nice sort of Werther's original butter candy, butterscotchy thing uh, to this one, which I, I certainly do like. But yeah, the way that this beer was about his business on the malty side of things, I think is pretty nice. So let's focus on the, uh, yeah, let's focus on the back third of the palate. And I think we've said everything we need to about the middle third of the palate. So in the border region between middle and back third, you get a little bit, you get a little bit of a more kind of bread crusty note in there. So you can feel that build up in the base of the back third of the palate. Is a little bit more um the base of the back third of the palette is a little bit more kind of bread crusty and grainy on top of that you've got a wee bit of a kind of on top of that you've got a wee bit of a sort of the, the fluffy white bread you know again and again it just i was just thinking it feels a wee bit more grainy as well as i always say the more kind of grainy better flavors come out toward the back of the palette uh, whereas the sweeter ones come out further forward. So you have a little bit of bread crust in there. You've got that nice little bit of a kind of grainy bready note. On top of that, you get the wheatiness there, so you can feel the thicker wheaty note and the kind of bitiness coming out of the beer. Absolutely. So yeah, the way that that goes together, the way that that goes together, I think, is pretty... Um, is pretty nice but um yeah i mean on top of the wheat you get that little bit of wheaty brightness in there you do get a wee bit of thing from the yeast and the yeast is interesting in this one as well you get a slightly more dense doughy bready note to it and it feels a little bit almost crackery as well which is interesting so yeah that sits on top of the kind of wheaty part of this beer but definitely the back third of the palate you can feel the flavor is a little bit taller then as you move further forward and go into the middle third of your palate the flavor just squashes down together that wee bit more so um yeah the way that everything goes together in that beer in this beer 
is um is pretty nice actually. It gets a thumbs up from me for sure. Uh, yeah, the multi side of the beer, I think that's us covered it. Let's go on to the hoppy side of it then. So, green component first off. Back corners of the palate, absolutely. A little bit of earthiness there. As you move further forward, you get a little bit more of a... You do get a little bit of that kind of floral aromaticity and as you push toward the front corners of the palette, it kind of intensifies, it gets a little bit brighter and things, which I have to say I do quite enjoy. So yeah, that nice bright floral aromaticity, but then yeah, around the front curve of the palette, it gets, um, the beer gets a little bit lighter and uh, on grassy for sure. And you can feel the grassiness has a good little bit of zestiness to it too. And that makes me suspect citra. I do think there might be a little bit of citra in this one. But um, yeah, nice. The, overall, I would say the green component in this beer is pretty oily, actually. So that's interesting. But yeah, let's focus on the uh, the fruity part of the beer then, the front third of your palate. So the border region between front third and middle third of your palate, again, you get a little bit of a bready build up to this one. So yeah, you get that nice little bit of bready, bread crusty build up there. The base of the front third of your palate has a wee bit of a smooth bread, it has a little bit of a smoother kind of bready note to it as well. But then um, on top of that, you can feel the kind of oaty sweetness forming the base. And then on top of that, that's when you get the nice kind of oily bubble. Uh, the nice sort of oily bubble where the um, where the, the, the flavours just kind of, the fruity flavours just roll the way out of the beer. It works, definitely works nicely. So yeah, on the yeah on the fruity side of the beer, then it's kind of what I was picking up in the aroma. To be honest with you, at the back of the front third of the palate, it's a wee bit passion fruity. Uh, so we yeah, it's a wee bit sort of passion fruity. It's a little bit more um, it's a little bit more kind of uh, it's got a, quite a bit of that big juicy mango you know, too. But at the same time, it remains oily underneath that when you reach the middle. Um, when you reach the middle of your uh, front third of your palate, there's a wee bit of an apricot-y kind of note there, maybe a wee touch of pineapple, something like that. So yeah, I think maybe Idaho 7, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's Idaho 7 and Citra that are in this, because yeah, when you move toward the front of uh, your palate, you do you get a wee bit of a kind of limey, I think there's a wee bit of a limey character comes out of this one. It's not quite as zesty as I thought it was going to be. I thought there'd be a little bit more of a lemony element to it, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is like Idaho 7, Motueka, Citra, you know, something like that that would be it, that would be in this one. But um, yeah, the way that this beer goes about its business, I certainly think, is really quite nice. It's got that big, oily, tropical fruit flavour to it. But um, yeah, that works. I don't think we need to say anything else about the um about the the fruity side of this beer though uh yeah i think that covers everything we need to say about the overall flavor of the beer too for me it is definitely what stylistically speaking it is definitely one of these american ipas it's got um a bit of the, it's got a lot of the oiliness and stuff like that of the west coast ipas but there's a nice smooth kind of um it's definitely got that nice kind of smooth um yeah, it has a, a, how would we say, it's got a bit of the kind of malty smoothness, if you like, of a, a New England. But yeah, let's round off with uh, a quick look at the mouthfeel then. Yeah, so mouthfeel wise for me, this is quite a big, um, it's, yeah, bottom end of full bodied, smooth carbonation, it's got a big oily sort of slick mouthfeel to it. In terms of IBUs, um, Yeah, in terms of IBUs, I think this beer, um, I think this is probably about 40, maybe 50 IBUs, something like that. It does give you a wee bit of bitterness into the aftertaste, but it's not going to blow the head off you. As we said earlier, the malt base, mainly quite smooth. It's got a nice little bit of an oily character to it as well, which I really like. And then you've also got that, uh, you do have that really nice, uh, just big oily fruity character to this one. So uh, yeah, this, this beer, it gets a big... Gets a big thumbs up from me. I really like how this one uh, goes about its business, absolutely. But definitely uh, an American.
freaking IP. It's one of these kind of hybrid ones. But yeah, I think we can leave it at that for this review. So um, yeah, this one is the Alna X, a triple IPA, I would say American IPA, from Vatlu Gordsbergery, just outside of Halmstad, in the southern part of Halland here in Sweden. Let's leave it there. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Vatnu Gords Brewery as well. And we will no doubt return to these guys at some point in the near future. But again, thank you for watching. Check out my social media. Check out Vatnu Gords Brewery's social media. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Slange it, skull. Cheers. See you very, very soon. Make sure you check out Vatnu Gords Brewery.